Hi everyone and welcome back to 5-Minute Family Search. So what I would like to do now is to do another video in regards to ancestors with tasks. This is an area that is really fun to do. I will pull out my phone if I'm standing in a long line or if I'm picking up my children and I have to sit and wait for a few minutes. I can go into my phone and do something productive and entertain myself at the same time. So ancestors with tasks, again, we get there by coming up to the top of the screen in those three bars and we come to ancestors with tasks. Now, when we do, if you remember yesterday when I did this video, I had around 80 something ancestors in my task list right here. The way that I increased that, and I explained this yesterday, but just to show you how, I'm going to pinch my screen and make this bigger so you can see what I'm doing. And I'm going to drag it down until I get here. When I see these arrows, when I click on that and expand out my tree, it's allowing the, the computer to go into all of that information and start pulling down those ancestors with tasks in the generations I've opened up. So when I do that, like I said, it'll make a bigger list for you to go through and to work with your ancestors. Now, mine probably didn't increase that much because I've opened mine up quite a bit, but um, anyway, well, actually it increased it by four just by doing that. So that is how you will increase your task list. So if you get to the end and you think there's not anything more, just go back and open up a few more generations and it'll search them for you. Now, if I come over here to the three lines, this is a filter, so I'm going to come in, and I apologize, it's a little blurry. It, it cleans up, but it is sometimes a little bit blurry to start. So now I have just come into Temple, and I wanted to give you a few different examples of things that you will see. So if I come down here to Samuel Sliger and click on him, it's going to automatically start, start searching for duplicates to make sure that there's not another record out there that could possibly have his Temple work in it. And if there is, then I want to merge those together. Together. And again, you can watch that in the desktop videos that I will attach. But I'm going to come here and here's Samuel Sliger it's saying that his temple work can be done. So this one is actually ready to go to the temple. And I, I know who this is. I've researched it out. And so he's all good to go. So I'm going to go ahead and say add to reserved family names. So now he is in my tree and ready for his information to be processed through. Now another one that I would like to show you is Andrew Morehouse. So I am just going to come up here and I'm going to type in Andrew. And here he is. I'm going to go ahead and click on him. Now he doesn't have a green temple. He has an orange one, which tells me that there's problems. Now in the desktop, it breaks it out and you get the little red circles with the exclamation points, anything like that. Here it's just underneath the orange circle. So you will need to go through to see what is going on and what is wrong in the record that is uh, making the computer kick it out and say it can't be processed through. So this says this person's name contains invalid characters and I can come right here and see that someone didn't know if her last name was Wilmot or Milhurt. Wilmert, I apologize, Wilmot or Wilmert and so they put in this forward slash but when it does that it compute confuses the computer so that's something that I would need to go in and to change and then I could fix that and process her information through another one I wanted to show you is John Newman and when I come to him and click on his orange circle it's going to see what problem is in his record and for him, it says this person must be linked to the parents before the sealing can be performed. So if we look here, we can see that his baptism is finished, his confirmation, his initiatory, his endowment. And he needs to be sealed to his parents, but we don't have a mother here to seal him to. So this tells me that I need to go in and do some research and to find his mother so that I can have her temple work done and I can seal her to her husband. And then I can seal John to his parents. Um, let's see, let's go out of here and let's go back into temple, let's see, that was temple, let's go into hints and let me just show you one there. And like I said, I just wanted to go through these so you could see some different things that you're going to see and things that you'll have to do. The, the other one is William Henry Morehouse and I wanted to get into his record and show you what is going on there. So we're going to go into record hints. And yesterday I showed you a record hint for my grandmother. And when I did, it had already been attached. And so I wanted to come in and see if I could find one for him that needed to be attached. And the one that I was looking for now I don't see. So let's just come in and do another one. So we're going to look at William Morehouse. 
And let's see if there is anything that we can attach in this record and show you how to do it. And in those desktop videos, I show you how to do this. The screens look exactly the same. It's just like I said, smaller since it is on your Android device. So here we go. This is from the United States Census of 1910. Here are those paper clips that I was talking about earlier. And before, when we did it, they were already done. So they looked a little bit different. But here they are actual paper clips. So this tells me that these need to be attached. So this information is going to be absorbed into Family Tree. So let's just go ahead and click on a paper clip. And when we do, it's going to show the information that needs to be added. So from this census report of 1910, they want to add into family search that he lived in Grant Jackson, West Virginia, United States. So to do that, I'm going to click on the plus sign. It's going to scooch that information over into that file, and I'm going to click Attach. Now, if it wasn't a match, I'll show you how you can say it's not a match. So this is what we saw yesterday because it was already done. There was a glitch with the computer. And I want to leave that video so you can see what it will look like. If it does look like this, that just shows you it's already done. So now let's click on Rosa Morehouse. We're going to come down and it wants to add in the same information that she was in the census report. Now I can go ahead and type in a reason and say that it is from this 1910 census report. But for now, I'm just going to go ahead and click attach. If it's not the same person, when we did William Morehouse, it said not a match. And you can just go ahead and click on that. And that will take you outside of the record. And it'll let you know and let the computer know that that person is not the same person and that you do not want to attach that to your tree. So anyway, these are just different things. Like I said, when you come in here, if you forget what they are, you can click on that I. It'll tell you this one is for record hints. This one is ready for the temple. And this encompasses any kind of problem that there is in the record that needs to be fixed, whether it's a name, like I showed you, there was an extra character in there I couldn't understand. If there's a date missing, a place missing, an actual parent missing so the child can't be sealed, it will let you know and you'll just have to read on the screen to see what the information is that's lacking. So anyway, that is again Ancestors with Tasks. It is fun to get in. It really builds your confidence in moving around in your tree and learning how to read the records and how to merge records and merge your duplicates, everything like that. But that is again how you use Ancestors with Tasks.